Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. United States fighter jet pilots are highly skilled individuals with a knack for handling the immense physical strains of aerial warfare. These men and women receive some of the best training in the world. But have you ever wondered what a day in the life of a fighter pilot looks like? Fighter pilots were born in World War I, or the Great War, when they engaged enemy biplanes in the skies over Europe. It has evolved into a sought-after career path. When fighter pilots are on the flight roster for the day, they start with a briefing after they don their flight suits. During this briefing, the ground crew is already preparing their aircraft. In the case of student pilots, the briefings are less about the mission and more about the aircraft and equipment mechanics. Training U.S. fighter pilots is a long and intensive program that can last more than six years. Candidate pilots must spend four years at the United States Air Force Academy, followed by a year of pilot training. Only then are they selected for fighter training. Prospective fighter pilots do a two-month course in San Antonio called the Introduction to Fighter Fundamentals. Only then will the new trainee find himself on the B course, where they undergo aircraft-specific training. Trainee fighter pilots don their flight suits in changing rooms or locker rooms before receiving their briefings. Flight suits for the modern F-35 Lightning II include the fire-resistant suit, followed by the G-suit, also known as the anti-G suit. Atop that, Fighter pilots also wear a utility vest as well as a flotation device. Pre-flight procedures are a critical component of flight preparation and are taught to pilots throughout their training careers to ensure it sticks. The pre-flight procedure is based on a very specific list that the ground crew follows. Once in the cockpit, the pilots follow their own pre-flight checklist. Of course, the flight suit would have no meaning without the specialized helmets worn by F-35 pilots. The HMDS, or Helmet Mounted Display System, is more than your average flight helmet, with various classified parts to it. Because the HMDS is such a fine-eyed piece of technology, it is specially fitted to the head of each individual fighter pilot. The helmet-mounted display system not only replaces the heads-up display or HUD in the cockpit, it also integrates multiple systems into a type of hive system. which is part of the Lightning II's superior aerial warfare capabilities. Personally, I'm incredibly humbled to have done what I did today and go take off in an F-35. But I hope that I can just continue to work hard, learn, and be the pilot that I'm expected to be in this airplane. Another world-beating characteristic of the F-35 Lightning II is its powerful and technologically advanced F-135 engine. And lends credence to the saying that the F-35 is a computer that happens to fly. With 40,000 pounds of after-burning thrust, 
the F-35 can reach a top speed of Mach 1.8. The mission of a fighter pilot is to engage and destroy enemy fighters. Aerial engagements can include beyond visual range or BVR engagements where they use missiles such as the AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -Air Missile or AMRAM to destroy enemy fighters at ranges of up to 160 kilometers or 100 miles. In the Vietnam War, the U.S. Air Force learned that dogfighting or air combat maneuvering would probably remain critical to any aerial engagement. Enemy fighters that get past fighter defenses will engage at short range with short range missiles or guns. Fighter pilots are taught how to outmaneuver enemy fighters using tried and tested maneuvers and tactics. Dogfighting requires the pilot to retain visual contact with the enemy fighter to be able to outmaneuver them and shoot them down. For short range dogfighting, F 35s are equipped with powerful guns. These guns can also be used to engage surface targets in what's known as strafing. Strafing runs are directed at surface targets requiring tremendous precision without a big fragmentation radius. Only the F-35A has an internal gun, the GAU-22A, a four-barrel version of the 25mm GAU-12 equalizer cannon. F-35Bs and F-35Cs can attach GAU-22A gun pods with loss of stealth. In any event, these guns offer the F-35 pilot a lethal additional ground attack capability. Often, the strafing run will be coordinated with ground forces for increased accuracy and target identification. Once the pilot has confirmed they have a legitimate target, they will engage. The helmet-mounted display system provides the pilot with all the necessary targeting data. Whereafter, the target is engaged and destroyed. Aerial refueling further increases the lethality of the F-35 Lightning II by increasing its range and loiter time. Without refueling, the F-35 has a combat range of 770 miles. With a longer loiter time, the F-35 can engage retreating enemy aircraft or do so when they are refueling. The F-35 is guided into the aerial refueling envelope by the boom operator, or boomer, of a KC-135 Stratotanker. The boomer controls the flying boom by means of a joystick. Once the refueling boom is connected to the refueling receptacle on the receiver aircraft, the boom operator reports contact over the radio. Contact, sir. Once refueling is completed at a rate of 900 gallons per minute, the refueling boom is disconnected. The F-35 pilot exits the aerial refueling envelope. His wingman joins him and they break formation to continue their mission. Formation flying and its coinciding maneuvers take years of training to perfect. A large part of the quality training of F-35 or any other pilot comes from quality simulator training.
There are different types of simulators for different aspects of flying. But full mission simulators or FMSs cover all aspects of F-35 flying. Back in today's legacy airplanes, we've got different sets of sensors. Those sensors work independently of each other and it's up to the pilot to use his brain or her brain to be able to put that picture together. Here, it all comes together on one display. Pilot training can be further enhanced by employing virtual reality training, or VR training. This type of training provides inputs to the trainee's senses, such as his eyes and ears, but does not move their body in coordination with the aircraft airframe. Lack of physical feedback is one of its drawbacks, but cost effectiveness is one of its strongest features. VR training can be performed with fewer space requirements and provides pilots with the necessary skills to be able to fly an F-35 effectively. It's ideal for smaller budget air forces while ensuring they can support a future air war as U.S. or NATO allies. NATO countries have been open concerning the inclusion of female pilots in their air forces. The United States has also relaxed the rules with regard to the vision capabilities of personnel who apply for pilot roles. That has given many men and women the opportunity to reapply to become pilots and, hopefully, fighter pilots in the future. Ever since I was young, I wanted to be a pilot, but I then was put into a pretty strong glasses prescription. So I had to adjust to my career goals because at the time, PRK and LASIK weren't an option. Training pilots is a full-time process in the U.S. and other Air Forces. Its mission is to be ready for any scenario and includes having pilots who can be airborne within minutes. That is where scramble training comes in. Scramble training became critical during the Battle of Britain in World War II. Pilots had to be airborne within minutes once radar stations picked up the incoming flights of enemy aircraft. The need to scramble aircraft remained critical throughout the Cold War to get them airborne before nuclear missiles hit. Constant training means that these pilots are able to get their aircraft off the runway in a short time frame, which removes the surprise and speed initiative enemy fighters may have had. In case something went wrong during a sortie, Fighter pilots during World War I and II had to open their canopies and get out to be able to parachute to safety. That took time, which was often critical to survival. With the advancement of fighter jet technology, the protection of pilots has also increased. It's also a matter of protecting a costly six-year-long investment. The U.S. military ensured that they tested the effects acceleration and deceleration had on the human body. And crucially, what high G-forces did to the body and how to counter them. Out of these advancements, better airframes, anti-G suits, ejection seats and other technologies emerged. Fighter pilots are not only individuals with an unwavering desire to serve and protect, but they are also the epitome of excellence and resilience. Their job necessitates the ability to process a flood of information at the same time, which they must do under extreme pressure, often during air-to-air -air combat. They represent the pinnacle of dedication, courage, and skill and are a testament to the extraordinary capabilities of the human spirit and mind. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.